if we really want to see fruitfulness, then today what we need to do is we have to take a serious look at what pruning is, is all about. In the book of Mark chapter 9, verse, uh, I believe I said 30, 43, it says this, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands going to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Doesn't sound very pleasant so far, does it? Keeps on going. If your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed rather than having two feet to be cast into hell and into the fire that shall never be quenched, where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to sin, this is the gross one for me, pluck it out, it says, for it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into the hell fire where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Every time it talks about the worm not dying and the fire not being quenched, it's talking about the, 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 uh, the realness of hell. You said, I've gone through a hellacious day. I've had one, you know, one of those days. This is one that never stops, never ends. And so it says, if there's something that causes you to allow there to be a separation between you and God, if there's, if there's something that's creating distance between you and God, get rid of that and prune that. And then it says, for everyone will be seasoned with fire. Did you hear that? Everyone, takes us back to last week, talking about suffering. Every one of us will be seasoned with fire. Every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good. But if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. How do you think we're doing as a world in having peace with one another? Yeah. We don't have to talk much about it, much feedback. I think we're all, can, you know, I'm not saying it's all horrible, but, you know, we're going through some difficult times. But it says that we're to have the salt in us. What does that mean? It means have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Not just be aware of it, not just know about it, not just know it's a good thing, but actually practice it. Actually exercise that muscle and what it means to have the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit alive in your life. Now, many of you here today would say, I, I'm there. I've got the power. I've got the presence of the Holy, Holy Spirit. But how do you exercise that? It's when you're going through seasons and you put your faith in God, even when maybe the world says otherwise. You place your faith in God because that's what makes all the difference in the world. So I never understood this verse. You know, it, it sounded like a self-mutilating verse, right? If your hand causes you to sin, chop it off. If that's the truth, then I should have no hands. I should have no feet. I should have no eyes because we live in a sin world, right? Now let's just, I'm going to clear this up. You don't all have to worry about, I mean, is he asking me if I've ever sinned? We all have. None, we all fall short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. The question is, is when you fall down, do you get back up? That's what makes all the difference in the world. People want to know, how can I have victory? Well, when you find yourself falling down and doing the wrong thing, get back up. That's how I got there. You know, people say, well, you know, do you really have struggles? Yes, I'm human, just like you. I fall down, but I decide to get back up. And I had to learn some principles along the way. Early on in my walk with Christ, and, and, it, and ironically, my walk with Christ and these principles I learned, when, they just coincided perfectly when Lisa and I were, were, were first married. And, and, and learning the principle of pruning when God's speaking to you and you're developing relationship is so essential and so key. Now, if you're saying, well, I've never learned these principles, is it going to be harder for me? It, you're going to find out in a minute, it's always hard to prune. It's always hard. Nobody likes it. But when you trust the Lord through that process, if you're here today and you're saying, I want to see more fruitfulness in my life, I'm asking that you, you would keep your heart open and listen for the Holy Spirit, for what he might be speaking to you. I'm going to ask you a couple questions in just the next few minutes, but one of them is going to be this. Listen for this. Is there anything that the Holy Spirit is asking you to prune? Just keep asking yourself that question as, as we talk. Is there anything that the Lord's asking you to prune? Maybe for some of you it's going to be, and it can be a hundred different things. Now, I know I know nothing about what's going on with your life, okay? So if I mention something and you're like, oh, how did he know? I don't, okay? But that's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. He's pointing that out to you. So you might find that, that, that the Holy Spirit's going to ask you, you know what? I want you to prune your attitude. Ooh, we're going there. Prune my attitude. Possibly he may ask you to prune that. Uh, maybe he's going to say, I want you to prune an area in your life and not spend so much time, you know, worrying about what's on TV and, and spend some more time with your family. 
Maybe he's going to prune an area and he's going to say, you, you, you're doing something that, that, that's a habit or something or it's an addiction. And he's going to say, I want to prune that in your life. Know this, if God speaks to you that he wants you to prune something, it's always because he knows you're ready to do it. You just got to take that leap of faith. Most people tell me, they say, I, I don't know why God would tell me that. I can't quit that or I can't give that up. But if that were true, then why would the Lord put it on your heart? See, I'm asking you to ask the Lord, what is it that I need to prune? Lord, would you show me areas in my life that I need to prune? Let me, let me take you, give you an illustration. Are there any gardeners uh, here today who like to garden? There's a few. Maybe you're watching on TV and you like to garden. You don't have to have a huge uh, uh, flourishing garden. I like to plant tomato plants. There is nothing like homegrown tomatoes. I love them. So I will plant them and I will grow as many as I can. The problem is, is I grew so many last year, I didn't know what to do with that. I mean, I eat them. I slice them up and pour salt on them, and I eat them. Uh, we'll chop them up and put them in, in there for tacos. But I still had like 50 tomatoes sitting around. So I learned to make salsa, you know. And so now we, we just eat a bunch of salsa, you know. And, and, but when I was growing these plants, there's more to it than just sticking it in the ground and hoping everything turns out, right? Uh, I put two plants in this year, and I put them in way too early. And the frost got to them, killed two of them. And so I had to pull them out, put two more in, learned a lesson. And while these plants are growing, you know, I put the wire ring around it. And as they grow and they start to flourish, what you do is, is you look and you watch and you look for the fruit, right? I grew, <clears throat> excuse me, I grew a tomato plant, not because I wanted some really pretty leaves. I grew a tomato plant because I wanted tomatoes, of course. So when the plant starts to grow, if you see a branch, a vine, a leaf, whatever, that's dead, what do you do? Pull it off, prune it. But what do you do then when you see a branch that's healthy, strong, green, and has very pretty leaves, but has no fruit? You know what you do with that? You prune that one as well. What do you mean you prune that one? I mean, it, it's got life in it. It's, it's got pretty leaves, you know. You wouldn't want to do that, would you? Yes, you do that. Why? Because it's not producing anything fruitful. And when you prune it, it sends all the health and the nutrients to the vines that are. Let me ask you this morning, are you content with a pretty vine and pretty leaves? Or do you want the fruitfulness of the Holy Spirit in your life? Because there's going to be times, if, if you're saying, I want more fruitfulness in my life, there's going to be times when God will show up and he'll say, hey, there's a dead vine. And you'll be like, yep, I agree with you. Let's pluck that out of there. Gone. That's easy because it's dead. But what if God comes and says, I want you to prune this in your life. And you're like, ho, oh, oh, ho, hold on a minute. I mean, look at the leaves. The leaves are looking good. I'm sure something's going to happen soon. But if God says to prune it, all he wants to know is, are we going to listen to him and obey him? This is where pruning can get difficult. We can understand it when it comes to a tomato plant, but now when it comes to our lives and God speaks to us about pruning, now it becomes personal, right? We doing okay this morning? Yeah. All right. You see, you prune the things that are dead in your life, but there's also going to be things that you'll have to prune in your life if you want to experience the fruitfulness in a relationship with Christ. You're going to have to prune the things that are unfruitful. They may have life in them, but they're of no benefit to you. Let me give you an example. When I gave my heart, like for real, for real, <laughs> uh, and it was genuine, I remember the Lord speaking to me and he said, Jim, uh, there's something I want you to prune in your life. And, and, and God may have spoken this to you before, or maybe he will, but he said, I want you to prune some relationships in your life. And I thought, prune relationships? I had some people that I would call friends. Um, they were more acquaintances than anything. And he said, Jim, you need to prune those areas in your life. He says, you need to cut those off. I said, but why? I've known these people and, and all my life. And, and he simply said, you need to prune it because it's bringing nothing fruitful and healthy to your life. Now, I have a choice in that moment. I can listen to God or I can listen to myself. But I've just asked the Lord for more fruitfulness. And I'll tell you what, as soon as I pruned those relationships, now I didn't go give them a formal invitation and say, hey, you've been pruned, okay? I just, I stopped feeding that relationship and I focused on what God had to say. And guess what happened? Fruitfulness started happening. There was, there was health that was coming back into my, into my life. But you see, we have to be willing at times when the Lord speaks to prune those difficult things. Here's a, here's a tougher question that I'm going to ask you to think about. You ready? What areas in your life right now are unfruitful? Are there any areas in your life that you'd say, 
I've got the vine. We've got, I, I, got, I got some leaves, but there's just, there's just no tomatoes there. <laughs> there's no fruit there. And maybe the Lord would ask you to prune that. Why would he do that? I mean, it's a branch. It's doing just fine. But maybe he's asking you to prune that in your life because he wants there to be health that comes to where the fruit is coming forth. God will do that in our lives. And there's some things we have to learn about this. Because you may hear God speak to you and he may prune you in areas that have to deal with finances. He may prune in areas that have to deal with responsibilities. He may prune in areas of relationships. He may prune in areas of, of time. You know, there, there's, a, there's a hundred different things and more that God may speak to you. But the question is not, will he or what he speaks? It's, will you obey it when you hear it? That's what makes all the difference in the world. When we learn to prune, what happens is, is we, we prune the dead things, we prune the unfruitful things, and then life starts to come back. But we have to make sure we understand some things about pruning. I'm going to give you four things. And the first one, I always start with just kind of, kind of easy statements, you know, ones that, okay, I get that. But the first thing, if we're going to become fruitful, that we have to understand, and write this down in your outlines, number one, pruning is hard. Or pruning can be hard. Again, we're talking about asking the Lord to prune something in our lives. We're not talking about pruning other people's lives, okay? Uh, that's easy to do. We can look at people and tell them what's wrong, and you just need to do this, and you just need to do that. But what about when the Holy Spirit comes and speaks to you and says, you need to spend less time out and more time at home with your family. You need to prune that area because that's, that's, that's where the fruit's going to be. Maybe he's going to talk to you in, in, in different areas and he'll always want to know, not just did you listen and hear what he said, but are you willing to obey what he, he has said? It can be hard at times. It can be difficult. For some of us, it, it, it can be our attitude. God may come and say, you, you need to really, you know, Check your attitude at the door. Well, I have every right to act this way. Do you see what they did? He's not concerned with that. He's concerned with, I told you what you need to prune, and are you going to do it? Maybe the Lord's going to speak to you in areas that have to do with, with, with relationships. God may be saying that you need to, to prune something so that health can come. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Whenever God is asking you to prune something, it's not because he wants to take something away. It's because he's got something greater he wants to give you. There's something he wants to give you that's of much greater value, but as long as you hold on to what you want, he can't give you what he has. And we're asking God for more fruitfulness. We're asking him for his blessings. And he's going, I've got arm loads. He goes, can you let down that feather? And we say, no, it's my feather. He, he can't give us this then. We're not willing to let something little go when he's got an abundance of blessings he wants to give to us, but we must be willing to prune. And that can be hard. Uh, I use my family a lot as illustrations, and they still love me. Uh, but I know for Lisa and I, when, when we were growing, we had to learn a, a lot of things. We, we had to be able to prune in our lives. Now, I, can't, I, I don't even want to attempt to speak for Lisa, so I'm just going to speak from my side. And another time, we'll have her share. She can share if she wants her side. And, uh, but as we were growing together in relationship... Um, the Lord spoke to me because I said, Lord, I, wanna, I, I want a fruitful relationship. Now, I didn't say the word fruitful, but I don't know what other word it was. But I, I said, I, I want a wife I can actually enjoy. Husbands, are you with me? You want a wife you can actually enjoy? Wives, you want a husband you can actually enjoy? And not just live together? You want to, you know, and I said, I want a fruitful relationship. I want to laugh with her. I want to I wanna enjoy going places with her, even if it is shoe stores or Ikea, Right? You know, I want to go, I just want to have fruitfulness in this relationship. And here's what God said. Then, Jim, you need to prune this and this. And I said, well, why don't you go prune her? <laughs> you know, because that's, that's the first thing we think of, right? Lord, I want this, so go fix them. But I'll tell you what, if you really want a fruitful relationship, God's going to speak to you. And then you've got to decide if you're going to do something about it. So when I said, Lord, I really want a fruitful relationship, not just with my wife and my kids, but in everything that I do, but this is where it started. He said, Jim, then you've got to prune this. Oh, I, I got to get rid of that? Yeah, you got to get rid of that. Why? It's almost as if God said, it doesn't matter. Are you going to listen? Oh, Lord, okay, what, what's next? I'll prune that. He said, then prune this. Oh, that too? You know, maybe it was my attitude. Maybe it was my, my ability to always want to be right or win the argument or wh wh whatever. You fill in the blank. You know, he says, you got to be willing to lay some of that down. And you got to let me speak to you and prune these areas so that health, the health you're asking for can come back. And, and I believe there's so much more that God has in store for us. But, but I, I think to myself, 
had we not, we both had to do this. Like I said, I'll let her share her story sometime. But um, had we not done this, I, I, I don't know what it would have looked like now had we just tried to just forge ahead and not be willing to allow the Holy Spirit to prune our lives. And the same is true for all of us. If we are willing to trust the Lord, fruitfulness will come. If we don't trust the Lord and we stick to our guns, then we're going to stay stuck and we're going to feel miserable at times. And there's a difference between miserable and what we talked about last week, suffering. You suffer for the right reason. You'll have times and seasons of suffering. But when you choose to disobey what God has said uh, and not prune wisely, then it never ends well. When God is calling us to prune wisely, he's never asking because he wants to take. He's asking because he wants to give. So it can be difficult. It can be hard. But by not obeying God, you limit the greater things that God wants to do in your life. Folks, there's so many things that God wants to do in your life. Whatever age you're at right now, if you're a young person who's figuring out school, college, and you're saying, I don't know what to do, God's got a great thing in store for you. Well, I can't figure it out. I don't know what it is. Don't panic. Don't stress. Don't worry. But talk to God about it. He will let you know. And he may say, I want you to prune some things. Well, that just makes it worse. Now I don't know what to do, and he's telling me to prune. But maybe he's pruning because he wants to clear the weeds so you can see the vision. Some of you here today, maybe you're at the place where you've retired, you're getting older. If I it, just be honest, you say, what's God going to use me for? Amazing things. But you've got to be able to see it and not just fall into that trap of I'm useless and nobody wants to have me around anymore. No, you've got so much to give. Well, I can't see it. That's why we need to understand this principle of pruning. Because the world has a way of saying, we don't need you. But that's not what God says. He says, I've got a great plan. And, and, and the fact that if you're here and you're retired, you know what that means? You've got a lot of time on your hands. Welcome to Church of the Open Door. <laughs> People have come and said, well, you don't have a ministry I can serve in. I said, well, what are you passionate about? What do you want to do? Well, build a ministry. You see, we, we build around the heart. But if you don't know what the heart is because you haven't pruned or allowed the Holy Spirit to do that, you, you, you won't know what direction to go. Now, again, whatever ministry we do, we do according to, the, to, to God's will and according to his word and what he's doing in this church. But there's so much God wants to do. But we've got to be willing to let the Holy Spirit prune our, heart, prune our hearts. And then when you hear him, obey what he says. Let me read to you. I, I gave you a lot of verses. Did you see that in your outline? Yeah, I, sorry, but not sorry. You know, uh, there was just so much. And so I, I'm going to read just some of them real quick. But I wanted you to see in the word of God what it has to say. In Deuteronomy 30, 19, this is the verse where, and I, I said it last week, I think, he says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, the blessings and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live. He made this very simple for us. I gave you 10 questions on the test. They're all multiple choice. Here's the answers. Write them down. That's basically what he's saying. But yet we choose unwisely sometimes. Pruning can be hard, but when you lean into God, he'll give you all the answers that you need. Let me read to you 1 Timothy 4, 7. And I took it out of two translations uh, just because I wanted to. I, I jump over to the message sometimes because they word it in, in different ways. But it says, on the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline is only of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds promises for the present life and also for the life to come. We've heard that verse before. I went over to the message and I read it and it says this way. Exercise, same verse. Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more, far more so, making you fit both today and forever. You see, as much as we want, and I love that in the Bible it says, hey, bodily discipline is only of little profit. That way I don't feel so bad when I don't work out, right? <laughs> but he's saying, as much as you work out in a gym because you want to stay uh, physically fit, he's saying, you must discipline yourself and allow God to speak to you and prune areas in your life so you, you can become spiritually fit. We want the health and the wholeness. We just, we don't make the time and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you need to prune in my heart and in my life? The Bible has a lot to say about, about this, about pruning and discipline. Uh, First Peter, these are just ones I'm rattling, so you can write them down if you want, but First Peter 1.13 says, therefore, prepare your minds for action and discipline yourself. First Peter 4.7 says, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. First Peter 5.8 
says, discipline yourselves and keep alert. Verse after verse, the Bible talks about disciplining yourself. Why? Because if you can discipline yourself to hear the Lord and prune where it's needed, you become better. You become healthier. But that can sometimes be hard work. Do you remember in the Bible when um, uh, Samuel came to Saul? Saul had offered up an offering, uh, didn't wait for the priest uh, to come because that was his job, that was his place. And so Saul stepped in and did it. And it says in 1 Samuel 5, to 23, should be up there on the screen. Uh, let's go ahead and read that one together, nice and loud. You ready? Go. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. He's saying basically here, obedience is key. When God is speaking, all he wants to know is, is, are we going to simply obey him? He's not interested in anything other than that. God may be calling you to sacrifice a few things, but it's because he wants your obedience. He doesn't want your stuff. And the only reason you have the stuff is because he gave it to you in the first place. And you may say, well, you know, I, I know maybe I need to make some adjustments in my attitude or my thinking and that. Okay, you may know it, but are you going to do it? Only, the only person that can prune that is you. He can reveal it to you, but you and I are the ones that have to do that. And it can be hard, but here's the other thing. Number two, write this down. You'll find that pruning will extend your life. That's straight from the Bible. Some people say, uh, I want to, especially teenagers when I was in youth group, they'd say, man, I want to live a long time. I said, I can tell you two things to make your life longer. And they said, what? I said, learn how to prune and honor your father and mother. And they're like, eh, I'm fine with a short life. <laughs> you know, they're but the Bible gives those promises. You honor your father, your mother. It says that it gives you long life. It says in, in the Bible that pruning extends your life. Let me read to you Deuteronomy. I'm going to read from chapter 10. I'm going to take something from verse, uh, chapter 11. I just want you to see how he puts this together, the wordage he uses for the children of, uh, of uh, Israel. He said, so now Israel, what do you ex think God expects from you? Just this, live in his presence in holy reverence, follow the road he set out for you, love him, serve God, your God, with everything you have in you. Obey his commandments and regulations and, uh, and obey the regulations of God that I'm commanding you today and live a good life. Then you jump over to chapter 11 and he says, that's right. If you diligently keep all of his commandments that I command you to obey, love God, your God, do what he tells you, stick close to him, God on his part will drive out all of the nations that stand in your way. And we sing the song, but this is where the truth, this is where the rubber meets the road. God is a way maker. Amen? In other words, he says, if you obey him and do what God says, if you seek him, and then when he speaks to you, you, you obey him, he says that he will drive out the nations before you. He will open doors and uh, windows of favor in your life. He will make a way when it seems like there is no way. Have you ever felt like you've had the whole nation just standing on your shoulders. You know what I'm talking about? Just the weight of the world. And you're like, man, I, I, I'm just trying to make it in, in the economy today. I look at it and I just don't know what to think about it. And you're trying to make all the morally right decisions, but then you find yourself giving in to a temptation that you know you shouldn't have. And you end up feeling like there's this giant that just mocks you and makes fun of you and tells you that you'll never make it. Can I tell you today that when you have that giant that stands in front of you, and if you've ever said, I wish there was something that I could just, I, I could just uh, repel the enemy with, here it is. Here's the key. The key is pruning. If you will learn to prune wisely in your life, then it cuts off every avenue that the enemy tries to come at you with because you're placing your faith in God by obeying what it is that he has to say. Let me ask you, are you, are you placing God first in your life and following his commands because when you prune yeah it's hard but it extends the potential of your life as well not just physical life though that's a part of it but it, it, it's talking about the life in your community the life of your testimony and how God wants to use you we need to have this shift take place because that's where we understand where we get the wisdom and the length of days Proverbs uh, is a great book I love Proverbs when I first, I've told you before, but when I read Proverbs, my mom asked me when I was kind of at the place in my life when I was getting my head back on my shoulders, you know, she said, Jimmy, will you read a proverb a day? And I was like, no, I don't want to read a proverb a day. But then I thought about it and I thought, yeah, okay, I can do that. There's 31 Proverbs chapters. It's 31 days in a month. Today is the 21st. So read Proverbs 21, you know, 
And that's what I would do. And this is, you hear about so much wisdom in, in, in Proverbs. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1, it says, My son, don't forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. Here is the promise. For length of days and years of life and peace, they will be added to you. Some people say, I want to know how I can live a good, fruitful life. Here it is. When you obey the Lord, it says that he will give you length of days in your life, length of years, and here's the real kicker behind it, and his peace will come with it. Because just living a long life may not be exactly what you want. Maybe you're at the place where you're like, I'm ready to just go be with Jesus. But if Jesus extends your days, it says that he will do it and give his peace along with it. That makes all the difference in the world. Deuteronomy chapter 30 says, by loving the Lord your God, and by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him, for this is your life and length of your days, that you may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. Some people may say, well, this is just my life. This is who I am. You know, I'm like my dad, and I'm like my dad's dad, and my dad's dad was like my dad's dad's dad, so this is who I am. What you see is what you get. Now, I've told you this before, when, when, when I was called into ministry, I, I, I didn't want to go, okay? I was a little bit stubborn, smidge. And um, I, I just said, Lord, if I'm going to go into ministry, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be fake, I don't want to be religious, I just want to be me. And it's almost as if God said, finally, just be you. And I started to step into that season, but as I did, and I, and I started thinking about how this goes... I said, Lord, I just want to be me. And I've said this statement to you before. What you see is what you get. I hope the Pastor Jim that you see here today is the Pastor Jim you see on Thursday and on Wednesday and on Monday and on Saturday. So I hope that what you see is what you get. But there's people that are on the flip side that use the phrase, what you see is what you get as an excuse. I don't think I can change. I don't think I can prune. I, you know, this is just the, the hand I was dealt in my life. This is the hurt and the pain I've experienced. So this, this is just it. What you see is what you get. Can I tell you that if that's your attitude, what you see is what you get and you're not willing to change, the only reason you are the way you are is because you choose to stay that way. That may be a, a pill that needs a little sugar coating. To, to, to go down. But if you are, where, if you're, you're hurt, you're in pain, uh, by the way, the word of God says he's close to those who are brokenhearted. He is nearer to you than, than ever before. But if you're in a place and you're saying what you see is what you get because I, I I'm, I'm unable to change, you're only unable because you're choosing to be unable. God, if you ask him, he will show you a completely new path. It may be hard. Pruning may be hard. Pruning will extend your life, but here's the goal. Number three, write this down. Pruning will bring more fruitfulness into your life. It'll bring more. You cannot say, I want to be more fruitful, but I'm unwilling to prune areas in my life and expect God to give you more fruit, okay? Uh, if you say you want to experience more of his power and his presence in your life, if you want to see more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit or you just, or you just like, I just want to just a closer relationship, then you got to be willing to come into the presence of God and spend time with Him. And when you ask Him to give you a more fruitful life, one of the very first things He's going to do is pull out His scissors, right? And that's usually when we get scared. But you don't have to be afraid of these because as you'll find out in a moment, God doesn't start hacking things to pieces. What he does is he hands you the scissors. His job is like a great shepherd. He leads you to the thing that you need to see. He shows you what it is that you need to know. And then he hands you the scissors and says, go ahead. Because the choice is always ours, folks. God, I, I, we, we can pray and say, God, prune this area in my life. But the reality is God, God can do that. But he wants to bring you with. And you experience what it means to make a decision. I'm going to I need to change this in my life. For some of you, like I said, maybe, and I'm just getting real. I don't know anything about anybody, but maybe, maybe you like to talk about others a little too much. And God says, why don't you quit talking about others so much and spend that time talking with me? Maybe he'll say, you know what? You know, don't, don't let your attitude get sour. Why don't you prune that area and say, Lord, give me more of your heart instead of just leaning into maybe some bitterness. Maybe it's going to be something like an addiction or a habit or something. Maybe we spend too much time doing things that we know we shouldn't do and God will come and say, I want to prune that area in your life. 
He's not going to come and just destroy it. He's going to lead you to it, and he's going to walk you through that. Why? So you can have more fruitfulness in your life. So you can have more fruitfulness. You know, we have some bushes in front of our house. They're monster bushes. I, anyway, uh, trimming bushes is never fun, but these things just overtook the, the sidewalk. So we have a sidewalk about this wide, and at this point, we had about this much room to walk through. You know, you had to walk sideways to get in our house. And so I got out the hedge trimmers, and I went at it. And the funny thing is, is I trimmed them back so much. I, got, I, I reclaimed my, my sidewalk, but I had to cut those bushes back so far. I was afraid I was going to kill them. But you know what happened? When I, when I pruned those bushes back, they actually gained more life. And when I cut them back and just didn't leave them all frumpy and hanging there all over the place, you know, wobbling in the wind, when I, when I, I took care of them and I pruned them back, all of a sudden they got a little greener. And health, started, they started shooting up taller. You know, that's the exact same thing that happens in our life. When God cuts something out of your life, it's because there's something that he wants to give you in return that's going to bring health into your home, your marriage, your finances, whatever it is that God's speaking to you. But he will not do it for you. He'll lead you to it, but then he's asking you, are you ready? Are you ready to walk in this area? Well, why do I have to do this, God? Well, you probably answer because you asked me, first of all, and because I want to bring more fruitfulness into your life. How many of you walked in here, let's say you walked in here with 10 bucks and that 10 bucks turned into 1,000 when you walked out? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, right? You know, we want to see things multiplied like that magically, but God says, I want to multiply things in your life, but I only do that through this principle of pruning. There's something he wants to do in our life. It, it can be difficult, but it extends our life and it brings more fruitfulness into our life. In your outlines, there's a little section that says this. When God says prune it, it means this. There's a letter A and a letter B. Here's letter A. Uh, when God says prune it, that means we have to have an ear that hears him. And B is, we then have to have a heart that obeys. You have to have both. When God says to you and to me, I want to prune this in your life, it's because he's got something better, but you got to have an ear to hear him but then after that, after having heard him, you now have to have a heart that obeys him, right? Can you agree with me on that? It's the proverbial, let, let's say you tell your kids, Seth, Drea, go clean the room. And they go, yes, mother, yes, father, I will go do it. We're happy because we heard them say that. But it doesn't mean anything until they actually go and clean the room, right? See, God, you can say, God, I want to see fruitfulness in my life. And he says, okay, then I need you to stop looking at that. Stop watching that. Stop thinking this way. Change that mindset. And if we don't do it, you're not going to see the fruit. You're not going to see that come. Because when God says prune it, he says, I want you to have ears that hear and then a heart that is willing to obey. Let me read John 15 to you. Because uh, this is one of, like I said, one of my top 10, I think. Uh, but he says this in John 15, verse 1. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear what? More fruit, the Bible says. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. I love this verse because it says, that which does not bear fruit, he takes it away. You and I would be like, okay, makes sense. It's not doing anything productive. Get rid of it, right? But yet, how hard is that for us in our life to do? But then he says, goes on, and without even a period there, it's a, just a semicolon. He just moves on and says, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He doesn't get rid of it, but he prunes it. That means you will experience at times in life that God, even though something looks fruitful, if God wants to go uh, this direction, are you going to be willing to go and follow him? Or are you going to get so caught up in the fruit? You know, He may want to prune an area in your life, but why does he do it? So that it may bear more fruit. More fruit. You see, the kingdom of God is, is to be here it's not on this earth. We are ambassadors for Christ, as we talked about last week, and he desires for fruit to be shown in our lives so that it can give not just blessings in our life, but it gives glory to God. He wants to use that to work through our life, but if we're not willing to prune in areas of our life, our relationships will start to suffer. Uh, our thought processes will start to suffer. Our hunger for the Lord starts to dwindle. Let me ask you this morning, what are maybe some of the areas in your life that you know, that you've got a healthy vine going on. You've got some amazing leaves swaying in the wind, but there's no fruit. And the Lord may be asking you to prune it. Oh, but you know what? I, I love this job, and I'm awesome at this job, and I got, but, but 
but God may have something better for you. Or maybe it's a relationship thing. You can have everything going on, but if it doesn't have the stand, if it's not bearing fruit, the Bible says that he, he, he removes it. He removes it. Is there something in your life that maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you that he wants to remove or prune, not because he wants to take anything from you, but because he wants to give something to you? When God wants to prune, by the way, he doesn't show up with a pair of holy hedge clippers, okay, and start hacking to pieces. He doesn't show up with some angelic chainsaw and start carving your life to pieces. What he does, is, as I said earlier, is he leads you and me to a place that we need to see, and he shows us what needs to be pruned, and then he waits. Well, what's he waiting for? He's waiting for you and me. Many times we're saying, God, would you just take care of this? Would you do this? Would you this? Would you that? And and when he leads you to that place, he'll say, here's the scissors, or whatever cutting instrument you choose in your mind. And he says, let's prune it together. He's waiting on you and I. And when that happens, more fruitfulness comes into our life. And when we experience that happen, then it leads us to number four. We discover that pruning makes us wiser. Pruning makes us wiser. How many of you here today, and you don't have to raise your hands on that, but if I were to ask, would you like more wisdom in your life? Well, we'd probably all raise our hands, wouldn't we? We want more wisdom, but don't get wisdom confused with being smart, okay? Being smart is good. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being smart, but just being smart and having all the knowledge in the world is not going to impress God. What is going to impress God? Having a wise heart. You get education. I'm all about it, okay? You've heard my stories. I'm all about education, but I can't let education be the thing. My knowing and wanting to be in control of everything so that if you say something wrong, I can correct it or something. You know, that's, that's, that's about knowledge. That's about smarts. That's about your brain. But God says, seek wisdom. Uh, knowledge is good. You can, you can, some people get so excited. They say, I've gone to ISU and U of I and CCC and UNI and OSU and ABC and ZZ Top and, you know, fill in the blank. Use all the acronyms and the alphabets, but that doesn't impress God. What does? Having a a heart that's humble and says, above all else, I want to gain wisdom in my life. Let me read to you what it has to say in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. Let's read that one together. It's up there on the screen. You ready? Go. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Understanding and wisdom are both good. You have to have that, but you let wisdom be the thing that rules your heart, that rules your mind by hearing what the Holy Spirit has to speak. Because if you do not, and you just listen to self, it can end poorly for you. It can bite you. You have a respect. You know, I worked at RJS Electronics years ago, and we were at a place in Mount Carroll. And you know how on the top of a ladder it says, don't step here? I stepped there. And I I knew I shouldn't have. But I was up in a ceiling, I'm like, I'm just so close. And I stepped up on that, and they were doing, I was working on a, a PA system, you know, where they grab the, the microphone and the thing, Mr. Smith, please come to the front office, you know, one of those things. And uh, I thought, I can do this real quick. I stood on the top of that ladder, and I reached out, and I grabbed one wire, I grabbed the other wire. And I put them together, and I started to pull them together. And just as I touched them, somebody had the bright idea to get on and page somebody. Mr. Smith, will you please come to the office? And when they did that, it sent a small voltage current but large enough to make me almost wet myself, all right? I mean, I'm on the top of the ladder, and I can't let go, and I'm trying to keep my balance. I decided in that moment that I knew more. Wisdom says don't stand on top of the ladder. Wisdom says make sure nobody's using the PA system before you go touching the bare wires, but no, I knew what I was doing, and I paid the price. How many times in your life and in mine Have we looked at situations and instead of seeking the Lord and gaining wisdom and letting him prune areas of our life, we said, oh, I got this. I know what to do. And it only ended up biting biting us in the end. John 13, 17 says this, uh, the things that you know. If you know these things, you are blessed what? If you do them. You've got to do them. You can't just know them. You've got to do them. And that takes wisdom from above. Wisdom that God gives from his Holy Spirit so that you and I can prune wisely. So I'm, I'm going to end with just simply asking this question one more time. What is it that maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you that he says needs to be pruned? Pruning can be hard, but it extends your life. It brings more fruitfulness, and it makes us wiser. That far outweighs going through the struggles of pruning because God's got something greater 
at the end. Amen? Amen. So, Father, I'm going to ask today that you would give us wisdom from above. That when we leave this place, we leave not the same way that we came in, but we've not just gained knowledge of what some pastor had to say. We've gained wisdom because we've heard your Holy Spirit speak this morning. Lord, I pray for each and every person here today. That, Lord, as we look at our lives, would you show us, would you give us your eyes to see what you see? And give us a sensitive heart to hear where you want to prune in our lives. Lord, for some of us, that's a scary thing. We're afraid you're going to take something that we value and we cherish. But Lord, we're declaring today that if we trust you and we, we uh, extend our hands and surrender that to you, that Lord, you're going to turn that around and you're going to allow there to be a greater blessing than there ever was in the first place. So Jesus, I'm asking today that you give us wisdom from above and that Lord, when we give us ears to hear you and then the tenacity to boldly obey you so that we can see fruitfulness in our lives. We simply ask in Jesus' name, amen.